Well, it's a real pleasure now to uh, be joined by uh, Lauren Wilson, of course, famous for her solo display in a pit special. And she's going to join us now to tell us a little bit more about both the aircraft, a bit about her life, and of course, about the amazing display that she's done. So, uh, Lauren, good afternoon to you. First Hi there, up, George. Uh, nice to see you. Okay, that's great. Uh, I, uh, this is how it gets a bit clunky. So just every time you uh, speak okay. to each other, yeah, just have a little pause, okay? Sure. Um, okay. So, Lauren, you're still flying an S1S. That's a single seater, but it's no average uh, pit special, is it? I know you've done a few amendments and, uh, um, and various modifications to it. Tell us a bit about the aircraft. Uh, yeah, my uh, my pit special, she's... um. Yeah, she's a little bit special, more special than others, I guess. Um, she was built in the 80s in the UK um, and a, uh, is actually a home-built aircraft. She wasn't built by the factory. She was uh, built to be a competition machine by uh, some guys competing at the very highest levels, trying to be extras and things, which uh, over time, just it, it's not it's not really a competitive aeroplane uh, in, in the real sort of high-end levels. However, as an airshow machine, she's brilliant. Um, she's got uh, oversized controls. A slightly souped up engine and um, a fancy smoke system that actually I fitted to her in the end. So yeah, she's she's pretty good. I mean, I fly a standard pips as well as the spare. Um, my husband also flies, and the comparison is quite stark actually. Uh, that she's quicker, more responsive, um, and just a, a, a bit of a handful to fly, which makes her great fun to display. Yeah, well, you clearly enjoy what you're doing, but you're very much a self-made lady in aviation, aren't you? And you've got an engineering background and somewhere this spark to get in the air obviously happened. Tell us a bit about how you got involved in flying. Well, I always wanted to fly ever since I can sort of remember watching the jets flying over the house growing up as as a kid. But um, I, I was brought up in a in a council house from in quite a quite a poor sort of area and from a, a, quite an underprivileged background. I mean, we never went on never went abroad on holiday uh, at all. I'm still I th don't think my mum still has been abroad actually, if I'm honest. Uh, so yeah, I mean, flying and become you know getting into airline flying or anything like that just seems like an impossible dream. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know if anyone in my sort of distant family has ever flown, but there's no one that I'm aware of that was in the military, you know, flew in the military or anything like that. So I'm not quite sure where the uh, where the urge and the desire came from. But I can just remember watching the airplanes and, and thinking, yeah, wow, it's amazing. I'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, financially, it was never it was never something that was even considered an option. You know, it was a ridiculous pipe dream. So I went into engineering as an apprentice when I left school. Um, and basically, I spent everything every all my time trying to save every penny I earned to go and sort of get my private pilot's license so and somehow managed to scrape it enough together to go and do it just because I'm stubborn enough to think I'm going to go and do things that people tell me I can't so I guess that's kind of my background really so I saved the money up and went and went and got my got my private pilot's license when I was 20 um and did various bits and pieces with that and then eventually discovered aerobatics through a friend of a friend and just got immediately hooked on it and it became a bit of a, an addiction ever since it's an extraordinary story and a great successful story at that um but you you went from zero to public display flying pretty fast i think you were only about 25 was it maybe correct me when was your first public display my first public display was in 2013. So, oh God, how would how old would I have been then? I'd have been 24, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I got into I got into competitive flying when I was 22 or 23. So I'd only been flying two or three years, and I actually had a bit of a break in there, and just I just loved it, and it um it became obvious sort of fairly early on that to be able to even remotely hope hope to afford to compete which is where I started out was was aerobatic competition flying um, I needed to own an aeroplane because hiring one was was unfeasibly expensive and the the irony is that owning one I thought would be cheaper um, <laughs> <laughs> whether that's that's debatable uh, in itself but um, yeah it's proven to be it's proven to be to have been a, a good investment um, and yeah and I basically got into display flying through uh, various mentors who suggested it because it'd be a way that rather than just having to spend a fortune on going to competitions that maybe it could bring a little bit of money back in to to help pay its way and uh, yeah that's where that all started.
Yeah. yeah, fantastic stuff. Now, you're about to run in. You've done your uh, pre-display checks. Uh, I know you turn up inverted just to check the cockpit and things like that. You're coming in to perform at the Wells Air Show. You've got that massive uh, beach and seafront ahead of you. Tell us what it feels like as soon as you get those uh, words. Lauren, clear display. Yeah, it's quite a buzz actually. I mean, uh, it, there's there's two there's two ways of kind of looking at it because at the time you're just so focused on getting the job done and 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 doing what you've trained for uh, that everything everything's almost quite automatic. Um, so I mean, people often comment on my my videos where you can see my face that I that I'm never smiling when I'm display flying, which it's not that I'm not enjoying myself because I absolutely love it. I mean, it's it's the best feeling in the world. But I think that I think that look on my face must be just my resting kind of like grumpy looking focus face. I mean, I I'm certainly not grumpy, but uh, that's uh, it's, that look does make people think that that yeah, why aren't you smiling? And it's like, well, I think it's just because I'm concentrating. Um, so most of, most of the display, I can, I'll be honest, is just or it's almost automatic um, and it's just completely focused. Um, but there are moments where you've got enough capacity to sort of look out the window and you can see the crowds and you can see people waving and you can just see everything that's going on. And it's just the most amazing feeling. It's just it's just brilliant. It's just it's wonderful to think that there are so many people down there watching what you're doing and that what you're doing is making them smile, that it makes everything, makes all the effort and all the hardship and all the, all those bad weather days where the display really is hard work. It just makes it all worthwhile. And it's, it's just, a, it's just fantastic. Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, terrific uh, feedback for everybody uh, certainly listening with us today. Um, now we've all had a pretty tough summer and you, including me and many others have been grounded what are sort of things you've been getting up to in your spare time? My spare time, I've been, I, guess, I guess since lockdown started, I, I've had I've had a bit of a roller coaster, and I caught I caught the COVID nineteen virus fairly early on in in um, after after we got locked down, which uh, actually meant that the first few weeks I didn't really mind not having much to do because I couldn't really do anything anyway. It was, it's, a, it's a horrendous thing to have. So anyone that catches it, I've got the greatest of sympathy for it. It's not a fun thing. But um, as a comeback from that, I've kind of got back into cycling a lot. So uh, if you ask my husband, he'll tell you I've become a bit of an obsessive road cyclist, which... Uh, yeah, I've always cycled and I've always been into fitness and, uh, and running and weightlifting and being stuck at home. Um, but living in, I mean, I live in r rural Devon, sort of on the Devon Somerset border, and it's a beautiful place to go get out on my bike and, and just go and cycle. So that's that's kind of what I've been up to for the most part. And that's quite understandable because fitness is absolutely essential. And I often remind people uh, on the ground what it's like to perform a display like yours, where there's tremendous physical energy and forces on you with G and everything else. And I, I think we've got some interesting questions coming up from some children uh, later on during the show. Time now for a few questions. And the first up this afternoon is from Marie Griffith. She's eight years old and from Swansea. What advice would you give to girls who want to become a pilot like you? Well, firstly, hi, Marie, and thanks for such a great question. Um, it's one I get asked quite a lot, actually, because there aren't too many of us girls out there doing this kind of thing. Um, and the main piece of advice that I'd really give is to not worry about being a girl because I've, it's never been an issue for me. Um, the community and aviation and everything in general, you're all seen as equals and everyone I've ever displayed with has just seen me as the same as everyone else. And I've never found that being, being a girl has been in any way shape or form a problem. You get the occasional kind of raised eyebrow or people, people surprised, but I think that's quite, I, I quite enjoy it. And, and I quite like being able to go and meet young women and young girls at school and sort of talk to them about doing you know studying science and maths and all the rest of it because those are the subjects that help you if you're going to become a pilot but um just i would say just just go out there and if you want if you want to fly and you want to do anything that the boys do there's no reason that you can't do it so just go out there and do what you want to do the next question is from brendan who's aged just six years old what's the fastest you've ever done 
Well, hi, Brendan. Um, yeah, that's a good question, really. In the in the pits when I'm displaying, we get I get up to about 200 miles per hour during a display. So that's probably the fastest that she's ever gone. But in my in my career as an airline pilot, way up high, we tended to go a, a wee bit faster than that. But um, to be honest, you can't really tell what it feels like when you're up high. Whereas when you're low in front of the crowds in Swansea over the sea at 200 miles an hour, that's that's probably the fastest I'd consider that I've ever gone. The next question for Lauren comes from Daisy in Swansea. She's just nine years old. I would like to ask Lauren Wilson, what's your favourite trick while flying? Well, hi, Daisy. My favourite trick, my favourite manoeuvre whilst flying, I would say is probably something called the avalanche, which if you ever if you watch one of my display videos or you watch me displaying and you see me flying a loop, so it's a loop in the sky going upwards and there's a bit of a spinny whiz at the top, um, which is a thing called a flick roll. That's that's what we call an avalanche. So I'm going up and I'm flicking it around and the aeroplane's kind of rolling end over end and coming back down the other side. It looks spectacular. It draws some amazing kind of corkscrew smoke trails in the sky and they're just great fun to fly and I, I love doing them. So that's probably my favourite. Brilliant. Seven-year-old Ryan has asked another really interesting question. And I would like to ask Lauren Wilson, what is the funniest thing that has ever happened to you while flying? <laughs> oh, Ryan, that's the best question. Yeah. Um, the funniest thing. There have been there have been a few, but I think the one that makes most people go what and 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 giggle is my Snickers bar incident. Um, I would I can remember. Uh, I think I was training for a competition flight actually, so there was a lot of like pushing and negative G maneuvers, which uh, I don't tend to fly too much in displays because they're quite uncomfortable sort of maneuvers to fly. But back on this particular trip, I was I was doing a lot of that. So basically, when you when you're sort of pushing negative G, you go weightless or a little bit beyond weightless and so you kind of get pushed out of the seat and I think I'd left I've got a little bag in the side of the cockpit where I keep um, maps and bits and pieces and uh, I used to keep a, a chocolate bar so in this case a Snickers in one of these pockets that if I you know if I was traveling somewhere I could just have a snack whilst I was traveling and uh, yeah I'd left the zip undone on this little bag so I did this I did this big push maneuver and the Snickers bar came out of the bag and I could see it almost in slow motion, right in front of my face, immediately before it hit me, right between the eyes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then fell to the floor. And I spent the next five minutes having to turn the up aeroplane up to down and jiggle it around to try and, and find where this <laughs> chocolate bar had gone. But, um, yeah, that was probably one of my uh, uh, least uh, proud moments. But it was quite funny. I don't think there's any video of it, thankfully. Or if there is, I'm certainly not showing anybody. But there you <laughs> go. So um, top tip, don't, don't have floating chocolate bars in the cockpit. I'd just like to say huge thanks for being uh, invited along to participate today. I've always absolutely loved going uh, and flying at Swansea and flying in Wales. Um, it, it's a beautiful part of the country, and you're know, one of the best crowds that that we uh, that I've got I've gotten to perform for, and I absolutely love seeing you all. So I'd just like to say a huge thank you for to everyone for letting me be a part of this, and I hope that everyone has the you know a, a good rest of the year, and let's let's roll on the next display season.